In this advanced tutorial, we'll look at a useful technique for making modular feeds that can be used like services and invoked by other feeds. So let's look at this in practice. In Ops Manager, we have two feeds defined in the system category, and they're used for doing our full text indexing in Elasticsearch. So currently, standard ingest invokes our full text search uh, indexing process, but by decoupling the standard ingest flow from our actual indexing service, we can invoke these services for future feed templates. And then also notice that they are defined as regular feeds, so their run history can be monitored and you have the ability to actually troubleshoot the process. So let's jump over to NiFi and see how we were able to do this. So we're in NiFi and we're gonna go into our standard ingest template and we'll take a look at the request for indexing. We can see down here that there's, after we've completed the, the normal processing of our standard ingest, um, then we have these two extra processors, and the final one is actually writing a JMS message to our ActiveMQ service. And we take and prepare the payload in this step. So we're passing along the category, the feed name, system feed name, and the processing timestamp, and also which fields we want indexed. And then in this step, we're calling JMS, uh, posting that message. And then if we come back up to our system category, we can see that we have the two feeds here. And we can see on this side, we're receiving a JMS message, and then we're extracting the payload, and then we're running through our Elasticsearch logic. So you can see that you know these are two completely independent processes now. We have standard ingest that enqueues a JMS message, and then we have the Elasticsearch uh, service, which is running independently and can run, you know, again, asynchronously. So let's take a look at an example of how uh, JMS is working in this case. So I've created the following sample flow, and what we're doing here is we have a, a JMS sender and we have a JMS receiver. And notice there's no uh, relationship between here and here. So these are truly running asynchronously and disconnected. Uh, and so what's happening here is we're just generating a flow file for our test purposes. We're gonna um, put one attribute and we use this JMS dot uh, prefix. So any attributes with JMS dot value um, will get uh, included in the JMS message. Here we're just writing hello world. And then we're posting to uh, ActiveMQ. So let's let's go ahead and look at what the different parameters are. Um, so first off, we have a topic name, and this is just a value that uh, the receiver is also looking for. So it doesn't really matter what you set this to, uh, as long as it's uh, unique and the listener uh, knows what it is. And then uh, we're just going to use a topic queue, which is uh, or, or topic instead of a queue, which is appropriate here. Um, we are setting the message type to empty. Uh, so we're only going to pass along the attributes, uh, the flow file attributes that we want to send. And we don't care about the actual content of the flow file. The content normally would have uh, like the data we just ingested, for example. And we don't want to include that. We don't want to stick that on, on, on the topic queue. Uh, and then uh, we also have a max buffer size. So it turns out that even if you're not sending along the payload, um, this will still check the size of that uh, flow file content against whatever this buffer size is. So since we know we're not going to send along the content, I set this to just be an extremely large number. Um, and that way it doesn't actually fail the, the process um, when it sees a large file coming in. Um, and then we're going to basically uh, copy the, the attributes with the JMS prefix into the, the message body of the JMS message. And then on the listening side, notice that we're using the same topic name. We are going to extract the JMS properties um, into attributes of the flow file. Um, and we're also going to make it a durable subscription. And that way, we uh, even if we're offline and, are, and we're stopped, we'll still get all the messages that were sent. Um, so, so very important there. Uh, and then we're going to extract the, uh, so, so remember we're sticking attributes of JMS uh, or into the um, flow file as an attribute with the JMS prefix. So this is just an example that we can extract that into a regular property uh, for use. 
Uh, and then here we're just simply logging it so you can see what's going on. So let's go ahead and, and start this up. And this is going to send a, roughly a message every 10 seconds. So right away, we came through here. We can see that this task ran, uh, posted the JMS message. We can see that the receiver got it. And then we posted here, and it says, you know, uh, the value, hello world. So um, now if I was to stop this, let's go ahead and stop. Now notice that we have three, mes three messages processed, three sent. We'll wait for the next iteration. Now we have four messages that were posted, but only three were received. And that's because we stopped the listener. And now we have five. And again, because we're stopped, we've only processed three. But if we start up, we should process. There we are. Now we're synced up again. So we have six sent, six received. So the next step, we would uh, make a template. So we would create our, our service um, and create that template. And then um, we would go into Kylo, go to the feed manager, and we would register it as a template. So let's go ahead and look at our uh, system. Uh, so notice that we have, uh, we've created um, templates for the index schema and the index text uh, uh, service. And both are disabled. So we wanted exactly one feed of that type. And we created the feed. So we just went through the standard feed after we created a template. Uh, and then we disabled them. So that way, uh, they become unavailable. If you were to try to define a new one, they don't show up in the list. Right, so that's probably also important because you really only want a single instance of that service, most likely.